Welcome back to the garage. Today we're probably going to be all over the place. I've got a lot of things to button up over there. I've got a few odds and ends to figure out accessory wise. And then I've still got to get over to this transfer case, among other things. So let's jump into it. Well, I didn't get to film any of that. I kind of wanted to, but drilling and tapping, but for the record, there was still coolant in the dang engine. Ugh. And, oh, which side was it on? See, I don't have that nub anymore, but you'll see it on one of these. Freshly drilled out with that one. The treacherous bolt that snapped who knows how long ago that had a snapped off tap in it is done. It's drilled out, it is retapped. It's getting late. That was some effort, but it is done. Also, I can't help myself when it comes to the detail. I just can't. Look at how clean that is. I need to retouch the T90s, the detail work. But that's clean. It doesn't match the, the color scheme we're going for, but that's clean. I've been letting this plate hang out around here too long. It's just been in the way. So we're gonna scrub this down some more. Uh, that's about the biggest run of paint I've had. Looks awful, but fortunately this thing goes between the bell housing and the engine. So no one will ever know. They'll never know. It's the details. This thing was rusted to heck. A little bit of sandblasting. Hit it on the wire wheel over there. And then I sprayed some clear coat on it. Mint. I used to get a little bit obsessed with the order of operations here because surely there had to be a right way and a wrong way to do this and I didn't want to do it the wrong way. But really what the answer is, is that sure there are certain things where it matters. That transmission over there has an order of operations. This transfer case is gonna have an order of operations that I'm gonna to get to very soon. But the rest of it is just the work. There's work. You gotta clean this stuff up. You gotta get it all put back together right. But for the most part, there's no wrong way. Just get in there, get your tools, do some wrenching, and do the work. That's all there is to it. Read the instructions where you don't know, but get out there and start wrenching. Eventually, it's just been a long day and you're tired, so you just put it away for a while. But then the next day you come back and you keep going and you keep getting the work done. And eventually, it's almost ready to drive again. Let's get this alternator setup figured out. So this is the previous alternator setup you guys might remember. It um, kind of depended on this Bubba setup over here. Uh, this just went into one of the holes on the starter. And this uh, small block Chevy, I think it's just a random small block Chevy alternator bracket bolted up right here. And it, it wobbled a lot, wasn't really that great. And I don't know, this, was functional, but it kind of just takes away from the overall look of it. So instead I've picked up one of these. It's actually purpose built for L head and F head engines. I if I can get that bush in there. I'm 
gotta put it on here loose to start with. Now this is just a test fit. I'll probably put the bolt facing backwards. Just wanna make sure that this kind of works as intended. And that just leaves me one bolt short. Well, I was afraid I went to the proverbial well too many times, but saved by Honda parts. Now, don't worry, I'll probably go find an SAE bolt and nut that'll fit this guy instead of the random thing that's a, I mean, everything on a Honda is 10 millimeter. This is probably 10 millimeter. Starting to look just a little bit more finished up and ready to go. I just hate to put, I mean, I, I wire wheeled the thing mostly back when we were trying to get it cleaned up and just runnable. But that's just not pretty. I don't want to take this thing apart and sandblast it just to pretty it up. I, I'm resisting the urge. Maybe we'll just leave it at that. There we go, starting to look like an engine again. But once again, the contrast. Let's get this flywheel cleaned up and quickly refreshed. These gloves are useless though. Yeah. Go for the thicker ones. Currently 99 degrees. Blessedly cloudy. Looks like it's gonna rain, but I doubt that. Ooh, there's the timing mug, so I was wondering where those were. kind of priding myself on figuring out the right way to do stuff on this project. However, I'm about to do some sketchy shit and I hope I get away with it. Do what I do. This is sketchy. And that is the redneck flywheel resurfacing. That didn't turn out as bad as I expected it to. Again I say, don't do this. Take it to a machine shop and get it properly resurfaced. This will probably work for my application. It may not work for yours, so ask your local machinist if the redneck resurfacing is right for you. It's probably not.
It is actually kind of interesting to me. I can see the machine marks where this was last resurfaced. I just took the topsoil off and that kind of polished it up a little bit. You're supposed to do this on the vehicle. I'm not there yet. But I am going to quickly just assemble this primarily for me. So the, uh, oh, that's the backwards, isn't it? Primarily because I don't want that surface to rust up again. Normally one would have an alignment tool. I don't have the alignment tool, but I got one of these. Mint. Once again, this is temporary. I'm doing this specifically just to have the thing out of the way and know it's ready to go. But this is going to go... Maybe I can find a plastic bag for it, just trying to protect it from a couple of weeks of Arkansas. You know, 110, 115 degrees, whatever it's going to be tomorrow. Now my normal go-to would be to hose it down with WD-40, and that'll keep the surface rust away. That is quite counterintuitive on a clutch. This comes right out now. All right, that should at least keep the surfaces rust-free now that they're nice and clean until I can install it in a couple of weeks when I get everything together. Got this surface prepped up. About to get that oil pan back on, hopefully for the last time. knock on wood and through the magic of not recording the oil pan is back on this thing's kind of getting buttoned back up i don't like how the the quart gasket kind of squeezed out of there like that but it's torque to spec i mean it's nine foot pounds or something is what the spec is on this thing and that's what i did but it's got some gasket sealer on there so that should i guess pick up the slack wherever it's kind of squeezing out Well, I goofed. I made a rookie mistake. I was a little bit overzealous with the Permatex, just trying to make a good seal. When I torqued these bolts down to whatever the spec was, I think it was something like nine, nine foot pounds, I started to squeeze the seal out because it was just so slippery. You know, maybe I used the wrong Permatex product, but uh, either way, that seal is already failed and I'm you know paying the beginner tax on that when I've ordered another quart gasket if anyone happens to know what the Felpro part number is for the the Felpro version of this gasket leave that in the comments because I'm, I'm not so convinced on this cork one I mean, there's a modern one that might do better so if you happen to know let me know while we're over here the exhaust manifold saga continues. Welcome back to the kitchen table. So, I've been going back and forth with Kaiser Willys on these manifolds. Um, it's, it's just manufacturing differences is what it boils down to. Omics ADA is the only one pretty much who's making these manifolds from what I understand. Um, new old stocks probably really dried up at this point and I think there's some German made ones out there that were close but um, with these manifolds just understand that there are differences um, on the original exhaust manifold and the original intake manifold this surface right here is 7 16 on these new production ones um, that Omix is, is putting out, it's one half. So basically, that one sixteenth difference is what's causing me all the chaos here. So I could put like a one sixteenth shim there, but I don't know how I'd attach it and keep it there long term while I'm, you know, trying to torque torque a bolt down between the two. Um, 
but apparently this is the way they are. The new production omics intake manifolds also have a one half inch flange here. So the new production ones line up just fine. It's just when you try to mix old and new, that's where you're gonna run into problems. So now I've got two of these that won't fit. I get to send one back. And I think I'm gonna go back to this first one I got with an angle grinder. And I'm gonna have to gently smooth off 1 16th of an inch off of either side of here, not the mating surface, but this back side. I'm gonna have to make these four bolt holes oval shaped so I can get the mating surfaces here to sit flat against the block. And then I can get these four bolts to line up. And that's about the only way that you're gonna get these omics manifolds to work with an original intake. If it's in budget for you guys, it's almost easier just to get an intake and an exhaust together and just simplify it that way. At least now we can claim that it was built, not bought, that it was custom, not just off the shelf. Mm -hmm. Machining with an angle grinder, four out of 10. Don't really recommend. This is close, but I like precision, but I think this will work. And after probably 15 minutes of careful angle grinding, that is just about right. It's not perfect. You can kind of see where it's a little uneven in the light. But when you put a nut on it with everything back together over here, it sits flush and the manifold doesn't move. So it's fractions of an inch off. Like I'm talking 64ths off, maybe 128ths in some parts, but it'll work. Block is cleaned up and oil pan needs to be cleaned up, but we'll get there. Murphy's Law is just really kicking my butt on this project lately. I don't know if I stepped underneath a ladder or something or crossed paths with a black cat or what. I'm just not making any progress. It's Taco Tuesday and I don't have tacos. Monday, tequila Tuesday, wine Wednesday. Well, I'm back at the workbench and I'm feeling just a little bit defeated. I started editing some video and I had some high hopes at the start of this video. The good news is that I can see wood on the workbench again, uh, which means I've unearthed a lot of the Dana 18 pumpkin. So given how difficult the engine has turned out to be, especially with the added fact that I was unscrewing one of the manifold bolts and oil came out, which is a little weird because that goes into the water jacket, it makes me wonder if I've got oil now between the head and the gasket and the block, which means I need to pull the head just to be sure. be a cheap insurance policy, but I really don't want to go that far. But I've unearthed a bunch of the Dana 18 stuff, springs, levers, I still need to get the Cosmoline off the gears. A concerning pile of lock washers and a flat washer. And I honestly don't know where these came from. Because I underestimated the amount of time it would take to do some of this stuff and I thought you know I'll remember where they go nope so that's it for this one I'm going to continue working on this workbench and I think I'll take a break from all the engine and engine accessories and just get this Dana 18 rebuilt and out of the way and I think that'll move the project forward in the right direction
So thanks for watching and I'll see you on a hopefully more productive next one. Bye for now.